What's up guys, I'm Shane and welcome to Audioholics. Today we've got undeniably one of the best surround sound preamp processors out right now. It's the Anthem AVM60. I know what you're thinking, this thing's been out for a few years now. I think it came out in 2015 or 2016, but this is the first time Audioholics will have it in front of an actual video camera. We do have a written review up on the site, which I will link to in the description down below. In this video, we're gonna unbox it, check out what's inside, and run through the setup. I'll also give you some impressions on what I thought about the sound quality. So let's get to it. Inside, we get the power cord, remote control, which does have backlighting, two AAA batteries, an FM antenna, two Wi-Fi antennas, the manuals, and probably one of the best things about this package is the included calibrated microphone and mic stand. The AVM60 isn't the heaviest surround sound preamp, coming in at 20 pounds. If you're mounting this in your audio rack, it will take up a 4U space with the optional, not included, rack mount kit. It's 6.5 inches high by 17 and a quarter inches wide and 14 inches in depth. Build here is very high quality. It isn't some cheap sheet metal. It's thick and has an almost rough texture on the top and sides. On the front of the unit, you'll find directional keys for navigating the menus. An LED display with buttons for setup, dimmer, mode selection, level, zone selector, and an input button. The volume knob is located on the right side with a drop down door located bottom left that hides the inputs for a quarter inch headphone jack along with an HDMI and USB input. On the opposite corner are power buttons for zone 2 and for the main listening area. Around back we have multiple inputs for 5 analog audio ins, 3 optical and 2 coax. There's an infrared input as well as the RS-232 input. If you want to hardwire to your network, there is also an Ethernet input jack next to another USB input. There are 7 HDMI inputs that support HDR as well as Dolby Vision. We have 2 HDMI outputs with one supporting ARC. Now depending on the type of amplifiers you have, there are RCA preouts for all 11 channels plus 2 subwoofers. Or you can connect using the XLR connections. The AVM60 does support 11 channel decoding, so you can use up to 4 height speakers. Alright, on to the ARC box. We get a little instructional card directing you to the Anthem site, in case you need some directions. A Cat5 cable, one mini USB cable to connect the microphone to your PC. And of course, we get the microphone itself, which like I mentioned, does have a standard mini USB input. It's a nice quality mic, unlike some of the cheaper plastic offerings from some of the other manufacturers. And unlike the other guys, Anthem does give you a proper mini mic stand and not some cheap cardboard contraption. Now this will be replacing an Integra DRC R1 that I've been using for the past year. If you're coming from my personal channel, you'll know I use the Integra for all my movie reviews. And I think it sounds quite good. The room correction on the other hand, let's just say I don't use it. Okay, we've done the unboxing. Let's get this thing hooked up and check out some of the settings. All right, hitting the setup button on the remote will bring up the main menu. Let's take a look at the speaker setup. Tapping on speaker placement guide will bring up diagrams for possible speaker configurations. The first one is a standard seven channel setup. Next is five channels with no back speakers. Here is the setup I'll be using, which is seven lower channels with two height speakers. The heights can be configured with six positions with four being active, front, middle, and back. I'll be using front and back in my setup. Next up is the same as the previous, but instead of using ceiling speakers, this is for Dolby enabled speakers. You know, the reflecting type. Now we have on wall speakers with up to four speakers supported. I see a lot of people like to use those SVS elevation speakers for just this kind of setup. Once you get the layout that you'll be using, just hit enter on the remote to select it. Since I'm using height speakers, this option lets you choose in what position the heights will be used as. Just scroll down the list and select your location type. Mine is front ceiling, so I'll choose that one. And height two is back ceiling. 
Now, if you scroll down, you'll have four options for speaker profiles. For example, you can have profile one be a full 11 channel setup and profile two be a seven channel or two channel setup or whatever you prefer. You can have different options like different distances and level trims and a host of other options per profile. I think it's a nice touch and I haven't seen any other manufacturers do this. Next up is bass management. Here you can set crossovers for each speaker manually or have it done using ARC. We'll cover that later on in the video. Here again, you can have different profiles with different crossover points. Next is listener position. I have mine measured in feet, and you can only change them in increments of one foot. So if you're used to say a Denon or Marantz, which have smaller, more granular increments, you may be bothered by it, but didn't bother me. Now you'll have to set distances by yourself as ARC doesn't do it for you. I used both my Radio Shack meter and I used REW to get my subs dialed in. Here we have level calibration. And you guessed it, this is where you set speaker levels. ARC can do it for you, but I always like to go back and double check with my sound level meter. You know, just to be sure. Now we have input setup. I think most of these options are self-explanatory, but let's scroll down to profile name. Here is where you can select those different speaker profiles that you've created earlier. And here we have Anthem Room Correction on or off. After you've done the room correction, you can just toggle this and go back and forth and see if you like what ARC does to your sound. You also get Dolby Vision and Dolby Volume Leveler. It's basically Dolby's dynamic range compression. This can be useful for late night viewing if you want to keep those explosions from getting too loud and waking up the neighbors. Here we get some upmixing of two channel sources. We have two Anthem versions of DSP, one for movies and one for music, as well as Dolby and DTS upmixers and an all channels mode. Here we have the preferences menu. I think most of this is easy to understand, so I'll just speed through the section. Okay, now here we have system info. You can't do updates over your network here, so if there's an update available, you'll have to go to the website and download it onto a USB stick. I know it's kind of a bummer, but it's not really a deal breaker. Now, let's go and do the room correction. But first, we've got to set up the microphone. Setup is pretty easy. Just turn the lower knob to extend the stand, and be sure to tighten it back up. Turn the large upper knob to adjust the microphone arm, and retighten it so it doesn't drop. Place the mic on the end of the holder and you're done. Now that we got that all situated, you wanna be sure that the microphone is pointing straight up and down and that it's at ear level. So when you're sitting down, Kind of like on the same plane as your ear. I'm going to take a couple of measurements at each of my listening seats, one in the main listening position, to the left of it, and to the right of it, and I'm also going to get the back seats as well. The whole process should take about 10 or 15 minutes depending on how many positions you're going to measure. Again, one thing that I always do after I take any kind of measurements with these automatic room corrections is I always have my Radio Shack sound level meter handy just to be sure that I got all the levels matched correctly because sometimes you know these automatic room corrections you always get things wrong, right? So let's go ahead, run through the entire process, then come back, and then we'll give it a listen. You're gonna need to download the ARC software from the Anthem website. Once it's downloaded, just follow the on-screen directions. It'll ask you which profile you wanna use and which speakers to measure. You can also specify how many positions you wanna measure. Make sure you have your mic pointing straight up and at ear level. 
Now move the mic to the first position shown in the diagram and click OK. The test tones will start running. When the process is complete, you'll get graphs with your in-room response curves, uncorrected and corrected. You can always go back and fine tune if desired. So I've spent some time listening to a ton of movies on the AVM60. Their implementation of room correction is by far the best I've used in my home theater yet. I'm coming from using the Integra and their AccuEQ system, and it just never seems to get my crossovers right. Using Odyssey on the many Marantz preamps I've had always ended up with base levels that were anemic and non-existent. Although I know their new models have the Odyssey app that's been updated to let you configure the EQ manually, much like ARC does. Now after running Anthem's room correction, I noticed an immediate change in the way my subwoofer sounded. I wasn't getting lumpy or bloated bass, but rather a nice and smooth, tight controlled response. Sure, I could have used the EQ on SBS's PV16 to smooth things out, but I opted to let the Anthem do its thing. And it worked great. One other area I found ARC got right was fatigue. I saw myself not reaching for the remote control during longer movies like I do with the Integra. The higher frequencies at times can overwork your ears if you're listening at loud levels for long periods. With ARC engaged, the upper end remained detailed and spacious without having to constantly be adjusting the volume. I'm always watching and reviewing a ton of movies, so these two points stuck out to me right off the bat. If you're picking up this processor for its Dolby Atmos decoding, you'll be in for a treat. One of my favorite demo movies to throw in is Power Rangers. I know it's not the best movie, but it has to be one of the best sounding. If you check out the first chapter where the boys get into that car crash, you'll notice how perfectly matched the sound effects move in a full 360 degrees around your room and overhead. Every sound from the cow mooing, the police sirens, and the glass breaking is fantastically rendered here and made my speaker seem to disappear. It not only handles the huge surround soundtracks amazingly well, but the quieter, more nuanced ones also. Dropping in a quiet place next, you'll find the first chapter is full of ambiance like the delicate sounds of leaves and wind blowing to gentle footsteps. The AVM60 handled these quieter moments extremely well and never drew attention to any one of my speakers in my setup. The Anthem can also use Dolby and DTS up mixers if you want to expand those non-immersive mixes to utilize all your speakers. I found Dolby's up mixer to be more subtle, pulling out spatial cues and throwing them to the high channels. DTS seemed to be a little bit more aggressive in this area. I'm kind of a purist, so I like to listen to soundtracks the way they originally are. But both up mixers sounded good with a variety of older movies. Now these are just some quick points I wanted to touch on in this video. If you want a more detailed technical breakdown, you can always head over to the Audioholics website and read the review there. There'll be a link right down below if you want to check that out. So is the Anthem the right choice for you? I know there are a ton of options out there in this price category, but I think Anthem's room correction is in a different league and it should place it at the top of your list. As of this video, the AVM60 is $3,000 and does sound better to me than processors costing almost double the price. It's got great build quality and even better sound quality. If you can check this thing out at your local hi-fi shop, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Now if you guys would like to see something in a future video, let us know in the comments below. Give us a like if you found the video useful, and remember, keep listening.